Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can proudly say a son, a friend, a brother, a co-laborer, a minister of the Most High God, Prophet Bernard. I greet you, sir, globally, regionally, nationally, and profoundly. I thank God for your wife and family, Lady Mighty, and the youngsters, and everyone in that household that shares that altar, that platform, that pulpit with you on a day-to-day -day basis. I know they mean a lot to you, and I know you mean the world to them. I greet Prophet Bernard Ministry, both national here in Jamaica and international. I want to greet those who minister with you, alongside you. Apart from your wife, I want to thank God for the other ministers and those that are with you, on with you almost every night. That shares the prayer burden, that shares the ministry, the prophetic Duma and Mosa of the Lord that wait in his presence for an accurate word for his people. I continue to acknowledge Prophetess Latoya, a wonderful woman of God, a daughter, a gift of the soil of Jamaica. I am hoping that I'm correct, but Apostle John, that represent a body of ministers in another zone that God is opening up. Prophet Diana, and for my brother who shares the praise and worship platform that leads us in ushering in the presence of God, that creates an atmosphere that is conducive to his presence. We felt that, we experienced that tonight. To all the others who plays a significant role one way or another, whose names would have slipped me, but you are highly acknowledged as a part of this ministry and becoming more so a part of this global expression of the body of Christ. I greet you sincerely. I greet you wholeheartedly. I thank God for the declaration in the realm of the spirit this year over this ministry, over your lives, and for what God is going to do opening up tonight and the other nights continuing. We couldn't have chosen a better scripture taken from the pregnant word of God, the book of Joel. So much have come to know the prophet Joel as a fiery prophet, as a hot prophet, as a prophet that speaks so much about the end time. God having given him eyes to see and ears to hear concerning the prophetic, but particularly concerning the end time that speaks of the ecclesia, Ecclesia that speaks of the end time activities of the church of Jesus Christ, glorious, majestic, and triumphant in the earth, that speaks of what's going to happen in the end of the age. 
although Joel spoke then and spoke to Israel and Judah and spoke to northern and southern Israel, but Joel's prophecy came together and embodies the globe and the end time economically, politically, socially, psychologically, militarily. And Joel had a profound ear and sensitivity and eyes. And so from the womb of the prophetic, Joel addresses God's judgment call of a nation, of a people, and the nations round about them. God's judgment call. A call to repentance, a call to come away from their backslidings, a call to a backsliding world, a call to the backsliding nations, and a call to the backsliding nation, God's chosen generation. No one could have put it more succinctly, plainly, yet profoundly than the prophet Joel. After he narrates what he saw, what he hears, and what God used his vocabulary to proclaim concerning the type of judgment that is coming upon Israel, one that they had never experienced before, encountered before, one that there's nothing to compare to it because there was nothing like it before. Certainly, Joel spelt out God's heartbeat. No more prophets have quoted from Joel. Even the Lord Jesus Christ himself, a day of vengeance, a day of fire, a day of gloominess, all depiction he gave to what's coming. And then he shows the creativity of God, how God could use creatures as an army, those he called all different kinds of creatures, four kinds of them, the most devastating kinds of locusts. Only our God can use a locust army, different levels, grades, kinds of locusts. A locust is a set of creatures. They are so damaging and dangerous, they never stop eating and devouring until it goes down to the raw earth, the dirt, one kind would come. And when they devour and they don't want any level, their stomachs are turned off, another kind still comes. And that kind take, that kind take it further to another degrading level, denigrating level. And then another comes and take it to another level. And then a fourth level completely removes everything. God has given us an instant that when my judgment comes, nothing will be left to be judged by God. Total annihilation, total excommunication, total degradation, total destruction, total devouring. Nothing will be left. He is the one who has the weapons of mass destruction. And so he speaks to Israel, and Israel trembled in her boots, her kings, noblemen, senators, governors, the very rebellious, the anti-God worshippers, those who build satanic altars, they too heard what was pending, what none could escape from. There is no escape from this army, east, west, north, or south. 
O earth, hear, O earth. Hear, O heaven, under the earth, in the oceans beneath, the almighty God, his presence, his parousia is everywhere. Whither shall I go from thy presence? Adam and Eve tried to hide from it. So many, David prayed, take not thy presence, your parousia, your Shekinah, your glory, your unapproachable light, your infiniteness and presence causes the hills to melt, the mountains to tremble and to quake before you. Even fire fears the Almighty God. And so Israel, who knows some of the judgment and wrath of God, could not think of this unimaginable judgment. And this unimaginable God, who measures the deep of the ocean in the palm of his hands, who could not in words or with ink color what God said he was going to do. And so as they tremble within themselves, in the midst of that, God spoke a comforting word to his people, his love, his covenant that is everlasting, his mercy, his grace, his forgiveness, his tender compassionateness, his loving kindness. He can't just say love. His loving kindness and his kindness that is loving. God spoke up of a Messiah whose name is Yeshua that would come in those final and closing out years. And because of his compassion and pity upon humanity and willingness to pay the unpayable price to wipe the slate clean, Joel looked in the prophetic womb of God and Joel, Joel, Joel spoke a word over the land and God called it my land and God called it my people and God pronounced I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. Is there such another jealousy form and type of in all the earth? Is there any other God who would so love his people that he cries till his tears flood the earth, break the banks, and his fire sets further and fire? the lakes of fire of the earth and his tears dry joins the oceans of the earth. This is the God that we are talking about tonight and glory rule. And so the man of God receives a word from the prophet Joel. And he said something profound in the first year, it was the prayer room. Why? Because as a seasoned prophet, he knows that prayer is the foundation of all other ministries. Prayer is the foundation on which every superstructure that will last must rest. Oh, he understood that out of prayer would come elevation, a graduation, a promotion an increase, an advancement. So the second year was the year of elevation. God saying, come up higher, a little higher. I want to show you, church, something from my perspective, something from my perspective. I want you to, I want to lift you up above the earth that you would see man smaller than ants. See man for what they really are and see me God for who I am. And so he calls man a little bit higher, elevation, promotion, graduation. I want to show you something God says from the perspective 
of my throne, my kingdom, my dominion, my majesty, and my authority. And then we are told, having come up higher and seen from a different perspective, and you are no longer under low lying level of humanity and fallen mankind. He said, I'm going to, I'm going to deal with you in the fullness of my restoration. So he says these words, be glad now, you children of Zion, who is the Zion, the Zion of God, and rejoice in the Lord your God. It's a season, it's a year, no matter what destruction, no matter what COVID tried to do, twist and turns here and different strains here, whether they are omni and only one is omni, the omnipotent God, the omnipresent God, and the omniscient God. There's no other omni outside of God. No matter what destruction and distraction will come, I want my children, it's a year for Zion to know I am rejoicing over her and with her. I want you to sing, shout, dance, rejoice. For the land will experience deliverance, healing. Oppression will cease. The plagues will come to an end. The locusts, the northern army will disappear from your landmass, from your borders. Sickness and death, disease, the plagues, the serpent, the poisonous adder will go. Leviathan will flee. Poverty, oppression, depression, suppression, anxiety will go from your land. I decree and declare here, O Jamaica, here, O St. Lucia, here, O St. Kitts, here, O Africa, here, O New Zealand, Australia, here, O Malaysia, here, O Indonesia, Indo China, India, and China itself, here, O America. The word of the Lord from the mouth of the prophet Joel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a year of restoration. Restoration of what? Restoration from what? Restoration beginning where and how? What will be the modus operandi? What form will it take? It comes through the prophetic lips the lips of fire. It comes through the apostolic lips, strong governmental apostolic release, strong prophetic release, strong and thunderous release that causes mountains to shift and shake at the sound of the voice of the sovereign almighty God. When prophets will not prophesy anymore, but the word from the womb of the prophetic will come forth, blended with prayer, blended with authority, coming with the splendor and might of God. So he says, get a new prophetic song. Begin to sing. I will cause you to dance, not through the tulips, but through the planets, through the cosmos, Hallelujah. Sing a new song, O prophetic. Sing a new song, O apostolic fivefold. For the earth and the planets will come in alignment and in battle array. And I will destroy their weapons of mass destruction. Masandile Kotaya. Those who plan war and prepare for war and build their military machinery, God is gonna bring it to naught. But church, come up to Zion. Come up, O ye Zion of God. 
with a new song, a new declaration, a new proclamation, a new announcement, a new decree. Come up, oh he kingdom legislators. Stand in the courts of heaven, summon heaven's court to come together. Let the king of all the earth who measured the deep of the ocean in the palm of his hands be gathered the Lord of the nation, the God of the nation, the, the one in whom the nations desire. He says, come this year, beginning now, 365 days, assemble before your God with singing, shouting and rejoicing. Hear what else he says, for the Lord your God, for he hath given you former rain faithfully, not just rain, but the former rain faithfully, the rain that comes early in the season, early in the year, and it has a ministry and it has a focus. This rain, yes, 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 church, it speaks of refreshing and the drops all oh, upon the fallow ground, upon the soil that is thirsty till it cracks. But he's sending different types of rains for different purpose. This rain will open up the pastures. This rain will cause a different kind of fruit. The renewal of your agriculture because they were an agrarian people who raised animals and planted crops and depended on the sovereign almighty God to send the rain that would put the seeds in the ground after plowing the land and expect the crops to come but only God one plant one water but the increase could only come from God. There is an increase coming to the church and the kingdom of God, even in the famine days, even in the days of COVID-19. I am bringing my rain, a different kind of rain. Hey, the east wind, the north wind, the south wind, the west wind, but I'm bringing a new breeze, a new rain. It will blow upon you, dampen you, saturate you, water you, enforce you, enable you, give you new potential. This, this rain that is coming, the former rain softens the soil for planting. Winter, wheat, must be inserted, but the latter rain fell in the spring, not winter, causing the grain to swell in the earth and ensuring a good harvest. If the rain failed, then the crops will not grow, will not come. They will wither in the ground. The ants and other termites will have good food. But God said, the crop that I'm bringing is going to be a buster harvest, a crop you have never seen before. Each tree will grow till they tilt to the ground. It will be robust. It will be nothing like it before. The children will jump in the field and dance. The grapes, the corns. Ikasamando. Church, can you receive it on two levels? The natural and the spiritual. Can you come with me in the spiritual realm to see what's going to manifest in the natural? That God says this year's harvest evangelistically, church planting, missiology, you will stay in one place and speak a word that is pregnant with divine revelation and sovereign majesty and glory and dominion and another part of the earth will begin a to receive seed and harvest 
for a rain is coming upon the earth. They are predicting harvest in some part, but in other parts, locusts are coming. They are predicting famine and drought, no rain. But in the name of the Spirit of God, I hear a cry, I hear a word coming forth from this room of prayer, from this room of elevation, from this room of harvest, church, kingdom of God. Get ready, pull out your instruments, pull out your singing and your dancing. Be ready to shout, be ready to listen to the prophetic call of Joel. It's beginning to rain. A bumper crop, a bumper harvest is coming. Your sowing men will overtake your reapers and your reapers will come back and overtake your sowers. Come on, church. It's not time to prepare to die. It's not time to prepare. That's what Satan wants to abort. When you look at the clouds in the hospital, when you hear the crying children on our street, when you hear confused governments and presidents and prime ministers, many making apologies all over, saying I'm confused, I can't sleep at night. It's because what the heavens has decreed and declared will happen on the earth to preempt Satan's move of destruction to push back the demonic armies. That's why he wants to kill some of us before our assignment has lifted. But I prophesy tonight from this global altar, from this global platform, that an army of God is rising, empowered, driven by the Spirit of God, saying it's the year of restoration and I don't want to get into the type of restoration and the definition of restoration I'm speaking prophetically apostolically to a prophetic people to an apostolic people you go seek that out I'm saying to you arise get up be standing be perched for the fire of God is coming upon you coming upon us Oh, he church, we would not be asking, where is the God of Elijah? And we are the Elijahs of God. It's a different season. It's a different year. We're embarking on a new pathway. One thing will be spoken and a thousand other things will be heard and said. It's time for the new apostolic and the new prophetic. Wherever you are tonight, you are feeling something beyond sensation of your skin and of your body. It's been riveted in your spirit, a word that was meant and intended for you to be spoken in its right season and in its right time. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It is a rotative word, rotation. It is a progressive word, progression. It is a graduating word, graduation. It is a promotional word, uh, promoting the premise of the spirit. I come to a word called resurrection. For God in Genesis 2 and 2 worked for six days and on the seventh day, the seventh day of God, he rest from all his labors. He looked around and he said, it is good if I may say so. God worked and God rested. And then another member of the Trinity, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah of Israel, the God of all creation. He also came and instead of seven days, he worked three days because he went to the cross. What a work, what an intercession, what a sacrifice, what a debt he paid and repaid. And oh, the enemy thought he had him on Friday and he thought that his goose was cooked on Saturday. But the Bible tells me 
on the third day of Jesus Christ, the day of resurrection. You've been through the day of prayer. You've been through the day, oh yes, of elevation. But you have now entered the third day, Rabba Kosanda, and it's the day of resurrection. That's where our restoration is. Unless a grain of corn falls to the ground and dies, it shall not experience resurrection power. Oh, resurrection, restoration, a lifting up, a raising up of that which was dead and barren and forgotten. I speak. Ah, Samamakito Lolomondo. He said to them, he said to them, for unless a grain of corn falls to the ground. But he said to them, he said to them, Luke 13 and verse 32. He said to them, go tell that fox, go tell that thief, Herod, that I, Jesus said, on the first day, I will do signs. On the second day, I will do miracles. But on the third day, yes, I will do cures. But on the third day, even beyond that, on the third day, I will be perfected. He is perfecting his body. He's perfecting his church. He is bringing forth his kingdom. Figurative reference, but he's talking about the third day of Jesus Christ. We had lived the first day of public decoration. Everybody knew him. But the day and the year of obscurity that he literally went into seclusion. And the last day when he was walking through the doors of going to the cross offering himself upon that altar, ah, to bring forth our empowerment, our resurrection. Hell couldn't keep him down. The death, grave couldn't keep him. Oh, death couldn't hold him. Rashanda, I feel something tonight as if some of you are about to get up, leap out of your body, leap out of your flesh for the year of restoration. Of all things that were lost, that was stolen from you, robbed from you, from creation till now of your creation. Jesus Christ, knowing willfully, intentionally, went to the cross to release and endure upon you unlimited power that was not limited to the upper room, just to 120 men and women, just for a hundred years or just for 2000 years. But we have now entered into the third, the 3000 year reign of Jesus Christ. Oh, Peter reminds us of, ah, second Peter, chapter two, Verse 21, for a year, a day is as a thousand year, and a thousand year is as a day. You have been living for such a period of time with limited activity, with limited revelation, limited technology. But now the spirit of the living God has come upon you and I, Second Peter chapter Three and verse eight. One day is as a thousand year, and a thousand year is as a day. God don't measure time the way we measure it in a 24 hour cycle or a Roman lunar calendar. My God, we have entered now this year of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into the third millennium of God into the third day of God, which is not a 24 hour cycle. Jesus worked, yes, Christ, God worked, Jesus worked. Now the Holy Spirit is working in our midst to bring us into the presence of, of the Father. What have you lost? Fill in your slip. What have you lacked? What have you desired? What has the enemy robbed you from? I hear a word left out of my spirit tonight. Acceleration. My 
my, my, something has leapt in somebody tonight. It cannot be contained in your abdomen. It cannot be contained in your belly. A movement with progression, a movement with intensity. Something has just leapt. Has the baby left? Has the man child leapt inside of you? Is there a walking in resurrection power? Paul said, oh, that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering and to be made conformable unto his death. A different kind of ministry, a different kind of preaching, a different kind of prophetic, a different kind of apostolic is coming upon you. Whatever region of the world you exist, in Jamaica, it makes no difference. You will be translocated. You will be transported to Red, Red, Red Square, Moscow, to Leningrad, to India, ah, to Delhi, to Madras, in the spirit. Do a work for God to the center of Arabia, to the center of Mecca, Medina, to Africa, to Asia, to Indochina. That's how rapid God is moving by his spirit with an end time even evangelistic anointing with an end time glory. I want to say this as we plan to close tonight that God's response to COVID-19 is this, Habakkuk 2 and 14, for in the last days, God says, the knowledge of the Lord shall increase on the earth, even as the water covers the sea, as far as COVID is global, as a pandemic. He says, my glory, there is no answer to the glory of God. No demonic answer, no human answer, no scientific answer, no medical answer. Send the plagues, but when you stand filled with the glory of God, the glory of the former house, and the glory of the latter house, and the rain of the former rain, and the rain of the latter rain, you have got something on the inside of you that every demon must bow, every sickness must bow, every political power, every satanic altar must bow. Talk about restoration. Restoration don't mean to have what you had before, that you're gonna get back what you had before. No, 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 no. Not what Adam had before the fall. Restoration means quantum leap into the supernatural presence of God. Restoration is not a little foretaste and the mount of transfiguration. When the boy said, we don't want to come down, Jesus. What we have tasted, what we have seen, white of the purest white. Oh, we have never seen such white. We have never seen such light, light of the purest light. Oh, talk about restoration. Talk about restoration. It's more than Paul. Paul saw. Come in. Elevation. Come in. Taste the untasteable. Come in. Experience the unexperienced. It's not church in a building, in a four wall, with a tent over it or stained glass windows around it. Oh, this is my church and I go to this church in town. We have praise and worship. We know charismatic bunny hop. Oh, we meet over there. No, 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 no. This church cannot be measured. Cannot be limited or be restricted. We are one church that meets in many locations. No building can house what God is doing in this 21st century church as we prepare for the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When Isaiah saw it in chapter 6 of Hosea 6 and 2, he said, will you not revive us again, O God? After two days, he will revive us again. And on the third day, he will raise us up that we may live in 
is sight. All the prophets spoke of God's resurrecting work to consider this pattern and reassures his people of the power of the resurrection. You're waiting to be resurrected. You're waiting to be caught up in a twinkling of an eye, but I'm saying the resurrection power here and now to live in the power of the resurrected Christ, to live in the power of the resurrected glory, to live in the power of the anointing now. The jewel said in the last days, you're going to see and taste. Your young boys will experience this and your old men will be as fidgety as ever experiencing this. My God, age will be overcome. He will bust through that realm. That's what Joel was talking about then, now that we are stepping into. Joel saw it, but you and I will experience it, encounter it. No church sermon it, no church sermon, no Christian it can give you this. It's not what we tend to be doing on a Sunday morning, but the glory of God is going to come down. The glory of God is coming down. We're clearing the way, prophets and apostles and fivefold, bringing them into the fullness of the maturity of the sons of God. Oh, that India would cry out. Oh, that Japan would cry out. Oh, that China, the fastest growing church in the world, would cry out. Asia, Asia Minor. Oh, that Africa, a new praise and worship release in the body of Christ, a new prophetic unction, a new apostolic release. My God, my God, one of the fastest growing church on the planet. Oh, Africa, let your voices be heard. Let your voices be known. Cry out, Africa. Cry, Mother Africa. Mother, in many ways for many. Cry out, O oh Hispanic church, fastest growing in this hemisphere, fastest growing. Goop in America, no mud, no longer minority. Talk about what God is doing. Fastest political movement on the earth is being overrun by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Don't talk about Jamaica's murder rate, 1,500 going to 2,000 every year. Something is coming upon Jamaica, the glory of God, the glory, all oh, the glory of the Shekinah, all oh, the glory of the farmer and of the latter house, all oh, the glory of God. Moses said, I don't want to go without it. Let the nations around know that you are with us. Oh, not just the glory in the temple or in the tabernacle, not just the glory on top of the mountain. What was Adam clothed with? Lord, I heard your voice. I went and hid myself for I knew I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? What were you clothed with? Oh my God, it's not these clothes. Oh, it's not fig leaves anymore, but the glory of God, the unapproachable light and glory for all have sinned, Romans 3.23, and come short of the glory of God. And Psalm 8, for thou hast crowned him with glory and with honor, with power and with majesty, the glory days are coming back again. Talk about restoration, restoration of the glory, restoration of the anointing, restoration of the power, restoration of the ah, awesomeness of God, restoration of the power and might, restoration of what was in the upper room above and beyond, restoration of the supernatural. Talk about restoration. Are you ready for your restoration? What are you being restored to? From what? Unto what? By whom? Oh, restorative power, magnificence, excellence, and glory, splendor, authority, and majesty. Restoration of the anointing and of the anointed. Restoration of the Christ, the Lord's Messiah. 
lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up in the everlasting door and let the King of glory come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty in battle. The choruses and choirs of heaven began to say, who is he? And they shout, the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle, mighty to save. He is the King of glory. He is the King of glory. Strong, mighty. Restoration of what? Restoration from where to where? Oh, stop playing church. Stop singing little songs and little choruses. It's time for the full restoration of the power, the majesty, the glory, the sovereignty, the dominion, the authority, the kingly majesty. Oh, almighty God, I feel tonight something is about ready to happen in this midst. Something has already started to happen. An explosion of revelation, an explosion of glory, an explosion of sovereignty, an explosion of the fivefold. In Jesus' name, amen. I yield to my brother. Shut up, Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit.